right, so we're going to a reaching cooler, I believe, that's not cooling correctly. So let's go take a look and see what's going on. All right, so I had to pop these panels out so we can actually see what's going on. The uh, panel here for the start relay stuff's all falling off. But if you look down here in the capillary tube section, we're starting to frost up, which usually a uh, sign of it getting low in the refrigerant. And it's never been tapped, which sounds about time for it to be tapped. Um, it's not uncommon for at least the leak. It's a cold rail. Uh, so chances are it's probably low, and there's only one way to find out. And uh, so the thermostat did turn on and turn off, which was nice. So let's go ahead and get tapped onto this thing and see what we find out. Okay, according to what they're telling me, it just started doing this last week, and it had been doing pretty good. So we're going to put a tap on there, something that's easy to put on and take off. I want to see what the suction pressure is getting down to, see if it's getting low. If it is, great. We're going to go ahead and then pull the refrigerant out, and then we'll go ahead and get one soldered on there that I've already adapted with my swedge tool. And uh, we'll braise that thing on. So we're just going to go ahead and do those steps first, that way I can know where I'm at before I get started, that way I know where I'm going. Um, chance starts a little low, only holds 12 ounces. We're going to do a scan too before we get too tapped into it. Make sure that it's no humongo leaks. Chance starts a small one somewhere in either the rail or one of the lines somewhere. We just scanned the condenser and uh, I just went berserk three times in a row here. We got a leak there somewhere. Looks to me like it's leaking there on that T, so let's grab some soap and spray it and see what we got. That aluminum definitely uh, is nice and corrosive on that copper. You can see that T, that's a breeze. That's such a crappy breeze joint. Looks like a solder joint to me. Looks like we found it just where I said. You can see it right there on that. Crappy uh, solder joint. We'll go ahead and do all the sides over. Remove that well out of there. That's for the thermometer. Have to take some of that foam insulation off so it doesn't catch on fire. It goes right up in there to the, to the uh, cabinet, which will be kind of a pain. But we'll go ahead and get that rebrazed, and then we'll put on our tap and get it all sealed up with a good tap. All right, so. Use the little hand grinder. It's not the strongest thing in the world, but it does a pretty good job. It allowed me to get in there to that uh, backside. I'm gonna, as much as I always dig myself a hole, I'm going to clean that up with the wire brush wheel and rebraze that real quick. All right, you see, he's able to clean that up quite a bit. I went ahead and got that one too. You can see whoever brazed this didn't have a clue what they were doing. They just barely got enough in there. It almost looks like silver solder, honestly. I mean, I can make my braze joints look like that, but you can tell there's no tarnish. And we've got those ready to go, and I'm gonna go ahead and put one on the high side too. That way we can monitor that, because it never fails on these. That something goes wrong, and you need to be able to see both sides of the system. So we've got those all prepped up, ready to go, and we're gonna go ahead and get this braced in. All right, that was a lot of fun. Uh, that pipe right there came undone, popped out on me, which I was afraid was gonna happen if uh, I missed with that. So I went ahead and pulled it out, cut off the end, cut the, so I can get the braze off the end, and then uh, put it back in there and then rebrazed it. I was able to get the heat from all different sides, so I was able to pull into the uh, socket of the joints and get them in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a nitrogen test, spray all this for leaks, make sure they're all solid, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get this evacuated. Okay, we're purging this thing out, make sure we got everything out of it. It makes it a little easier for our vacuum to be done. 
Uh, and get this thing pumped up here and pressurized. We've got everything bubbled up. It does not appear that we have any leaks. Looks pretty good there. Pretty good there. I don't see anything here on that one back here in the back. Nope. Can't remember how hard it is to get to, so there's a little bit of extra on there. And uh, we're kind of down here in a cubby hole, people stepping on me as I'm trying to work. So uh, we got that one and sprayed the fitting back behind there. We're good on that. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that gook off and go ahead and uh, start uh, evacuating this thing. The system's been in a positive pressure the whole time. I'm not going to mess with changing the dryer. Um, it, uh, you know, anytime you open the system, you're supposed to change it, but in this case here, it wasn't pulling into a negative. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just reuse the dryer that we got and uh, get her going and see how we how we do. If we have any issues, then we'll change it. So we're going to do this a little quicker today since we uh, really aren't trying to remove any moisture or anything like that. Got to get this uh, taped up and we'll put some of the foam back on there. If not, I'm just going to use some Armaflex tape. Alright, so we went ahead and just wrapped it with the foam tape. It was a little bit easier. I was able to get everything covered. Then I kind of double wrapped it. It did use the aluminum again as much as I didn't want to. I mean, the factory's doing it. This is a Duke. I know True does it like that. You're going to have that no matter what kind of dissimilar metals you're going to put together like that. All they do is uh, they're taking this uh, tube across here, which is a sleeve for the thermostat to set in, and they're just measuring the suction line temperature. Very similar to how the ice cream machines and stuff do it. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish up this vacuum and get her charged. Okay, we're coming up on our 12 ounces, which is what the factory spec is. Fed it through the high side, which allowed us to verify that the low side is feeding from the high. Had our pop port tool in there. And uh, let's go ahead and get this thing kicked on and see what we get here. So the pressures are starting to drop on our heck of a load right now. Cold rail's kind of getting in that uh, cold spot there. We'll let this thing get by, or we'll let this thing stabilize and see what we got here in just a little bit. So far everything's looking good. So we went ahead and dumped our high side in there and it took it from like 25 up to 35. So it's more of a... Mm, couple degree plate temperature. Kind of going down here and looking, seeing how things are feeding. You can see that the cap tube there is already starting to freeze up, which I'm not real familiar with what its normal procedure is. Might be a big deal, maybe not a big deal. Kind of. Feel out which uh, capillary tube's got what going on. It might go compared to the other cabinet next uh, next to this. Okay, this is the other cooler. Let's see how it's uh, freezing up over there and feeding about the same way as that one is. That rear tube there is freezing up the same way the uh, well, the one in front isn't. So it's kind of the same type of design. So I don't know if they got more piping on that side than the other, but it appears this is running the same same design. This one's not been tapped, so it's uh, untouched. So I think we're probably fine. I'm going to check my rail and make sure it's uh, starting to frost up, because basically got to transfer a lot of cold over uh, through a dead air space to the pan, which then is exposed to the ambient air, which usually is way hotter than what you're hoping for. So let's see what we get. Okay, you can see we're feeding pretty good there. The different pockets so good there my pressure seem like the <clears throat> I should say my temperatures not my pressures I'm not a pressure focuser but they seem like they were a little low and um, he I called the factory and told me something very fascinating it says usually he tells them just to set it by superheat I'm like on a capillary tube system and he's like yeah and I said well that's that's interesting so I said, what do you look for? He said, somewhere between 8 and 15. I'm like, really? I said, what about my head pressure and suction pressure, since we're talking about pressures? Well, you should be running about a zero degree evaporator and about 225, 235 on your head. Well, 
we are 74 degrees in here, so 84, 94, so we're about 15 degrees over ambient because we're running about a 90 degree condensing temperature. We're running at negative 15 uh, rail, so he told me to add some to it said it was low. So I added uh, two ounces, which was way too much. So now we're checking our superheat. And I just was up to 24, added one ounce, overshot it. And we're at negative 16 of app, negative 17 uh, actual suction temperature. So guys, weigh it by the scale. Don't listen to other people. Um, I mean, it's it's good head knowledge. It's good to know where you're supposed to be at. But this just now wasted my time, and now I have to go through the hassles of nickel and diamond it in and out to get it right where you know it was probably fine before. But I did get some good information. I'm not going to fault him for that. But uh, it's just one of the things where you should have known better. And I went ahead and listened to him. Figured you know you do this every day. So we're going to have to take a little bit back out. This is why I don't like messing around with trying to add a little bit to it. I like to pull the charge, weigh it in, fresh, you're done. And if it ain't right, then it's their design that's wrong. So that or you know you got a capillary tube wrong or something like that, or you had a restriction or dryer or whatever. So far everything looks pretty good. It's uh, The rails, like I showed you, is getting uh, frozen down and everything's looking good. So so I went and pulled it all back out because you just can't nickel and dime this thing out. And my thermostat is bad on this too. Um, we're ordering a new thermostat on it. This thing should be shutting off at uh, zero degree and coming on at about 20. And I had to take it all the way down to one. And I don't even think one was uh, making it stop. You can see there the pressures uh, when it shuts off, they build up pretty good. And then uh, they're gonna drop obviously. There's your superheat. This is weighing in exactly at 12 ounces, and this is without me dropping the charge from the liquid line back into the compressor yet. But I, I believe that's going to work its way out here in a little bit. Um, I'm going to get this valved off, get the refrigerant out of the yellow hose, and then dump in what's, uh, what's on the high side. As you can see, as we start to run, our pressure start to drop. Just trust the charge chart there. See what he was saying about 225 and 32. We're right in that ballpark at startup. But I was way, way too cold because that thermostat wasn't shutting off like it should. So he said somewhere between 8 and 15 on the superheat, which we're kind of getting down there a little more than I want to. But like I said, got to give her some time here to stabilize and it'll come back up. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to check out the Facebook page, HVACR Survival, and we're also on Instagram. So until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.